What's up guys? My name is Lo and welcome back to my channel where we talk about money and mindset as well as my family's own journey to pay off six-figure debt. So if you like videos like that, then make sure you hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos. Today we are talking about FI. So if you're not familiar with FI or financial independence, it's just basically the concept of retirement, having enough money invested so you can stop working and live off your investments for the duration of your life. About six months ago, I had listened to an episode of a podcast called Choose Fi, and in that episode, they went through some of the stages of Fi. These are not like official stages or steps or anything, but just like in their opinion, different milestones that you hit on the journey to FI. And a lot of times people are talking about it in the context of retiring early. So FI is financial independence, but FIRE is financial independence retire early. So they're kind of used like interchangeably. But anyway, I made a video after I listened to that episode and that video went up about six months ago. I'll link it in the video description if you wanna check it out and see where we were back then. But basically I went through all the stages as that podcast laid out of FI to see like where are we at because we're in a ton of debt and we're trying to pay it off but we're also investing for retirement and just improving our net worth generally. So I kinda of wanted to just check in and see like, hey, how far along are we? Let's just set a baseline so we can see improvements along the way. So it's been six months. So let's check in and see where we are in the stages of FI. So the first couple stages of financial independence are hair on fire and awareness. So basically becoming aware of your financial situation and kind of like realizing like everything is crashing down financially and you need to make a change to be able to improve your finances or get to where you want to be financially. And so as of the last time I filmed this, we definitely had hit that. We had hit that back in fall of 2019 after my daughter was born and we had almost $400,000 of debt. That was made up of mostly student loans, but a car loan, credit card debt, a bunch of other things. And that was not including our mortgage. And I went back to work after maternity leave and we realized that daycare costs were just like they were gonna bankrupt us. Like it just was more than we could handle on top of all of our debt. So we knew we needed to make a huge change if we wanted to have financial stability for our family. So yeah, we definitely hit that back in like late 2019. And ever since then, beginning like January 1st, 2020, we have been on a debt-free journey for over two years now to get our debt paid off. So that's one and two. Number three is figure out your FI number, which they calculate as 25 times your annual expenses. And last time I did this video, I did 25 times our annual expenses to get that number. And it was somewhere, I think it was around 2 million. And I've done some thinking and reflecting since then and talking with my husband and that calculation is fine. Like you can use that number as your fine number, but we were just thinking more like, okay, generally what sort of like lifestyle do we want to be able to live? And we thought that having a hundred thousand dollars a year to live off of would be like a very comfortable lifestyle in retirement or early retirement. So to get to that number, it's a lot higher. And so basically I did a bunch of calculations and I can make a separate video talking about how I got to this number. I probably will at some point, but basically we figured out that adjusted for inflation, $100,000 when we retire is going to be more like 160 to 230 thousand dollars somewhere in that range so to get to that point we would need four to five million dollars to be able to live off of a hundred thousand dollars a year adjusted for inflation and that would really be like our fat fine number our fat financial independence number and that's number 17 on the list so i'll circle back to that later but I think like we don't want to go for anything but fat fi. Like if we're going to stop working and live off our investments, we want to be able to do it in a way that we can be very comfortable and be very generous and just like, you know, yeah, that's just what we're feeling right now in life. So four to five million is not really 25 our annual expenses because our annual expenses are way less than that. But I feel like that would be our like actual realistic phi number that we would really love to get to. All right, number four on the stages of phi is the first time you fully get your employer match. And we have been doing that, I think always, ever since we've been eligible for an employer match with my husband's company. I've never had an employer match. I've only had a profit share and not work for myself, but he's had an employer match available to him since he started this company five years ago. And I think we've always taken advantage of the employer match 
Um, there may have been like a little bit of time where we didn't, but we definitely did last year and we're definitely doing it again this year. Number five, $1,000 emergency fund or more. We have a $9,000 emergency fund. That is about one month of necessary expenses at this point. We do plan to bump that up to three to six months of necessary expenses once we're debt free, but that's a few years away. So for now, nine, 10,000 is where we're comfortable at. So we do get a check mark for number five as well. And then this one's very exciting. So number six is zero net worth slash back to broke. And last time I made this video, we were working on hitting that positive net worth. And I am so excited because we finally have a positive net worth. It's over $10,000 now. And we were in the negatives for so long so long so we're finally in the positives it feels amazing and i just like oh it's so good so anyway i'm so happy to be able to check this box now and i make net worth updates every single month so if you haven't seen those and you want to go check that out i also have a net worth tracking spreadsheet that i give to you guys for free so that will be linked in the video description if you want to track your net worth and if you want more information on like how to use it just watch my net worth updates and i go through every line item of how we do our net worth and then also if you don't want something so involved and you just want something more passive i love the app personal capital it's an app where you can link all of your accounts and it will calculate your net worth for you along with give you analysis on your investments and the fees you're paying and it even had an alert for me yesterday that said it looks like your emergency fund is only one month of your expenses you may want to consider bumping that up to three to six months and I was like thank you yes I would like to consider that as soon as we're debt free so it like analyzes your bank accounts and stuff and just it's a really cool app so I'll link that below if you guys want to check that out to track your net worth um, but do it in a way that just like automatically updates and you don't have to physically like put in the numbers every month because you all your accounts get linked all right number seven for the stages of five we are still a little ways away from but that is debt free besides the mortgage so we are not debt free besides our mortgage we are working on that and that's our debt free journey that we've been on for two years currently we have let me look I should know this number off the top of my head. I think it's $266,000 of debt. Yeah, as of March 1st, we had $266,374 of debt. I haven't updated our numbers for the month of March yet because it hasn't ended yet. But yeah, as of March 1st, we are at $266,000. We are moving for sure, but we have a ways to go. All right, number eight, first year you max out your 401k. Because we are a two income household, my husband and I share finances and we're married and like, you know, so for an individual to do this, it's a little bit different than a couple. So I didn't max out my 401k. I don't even have a 401k right now, but my husband maxed his out in 2021. So I'm gonna give us a check here and say we did this one because we did max out his 401k last year and we are planning to max it out again this year and i really really hope we can i think we can do it but yeah we are working on maxing it out for the second time this year so i'll say that we did accomplish this one all right next number nine is five figure net worth so ten thousand dollars or more and we also hit that so we hit the positive net worth and then very shortly after hit a uh, five figure net worth and yeah, again, it just feels so good to be out of the negative net worth. I had a negative net worth since age 22, and I am almost 35, so it took a long time. I wasn't working on it actively for many years, and, you know, whatever. We're here now, so that's very exciting to be able to check box number nine and say we do have a five-figure net worth. Okay, number 10, open a Roth IRA slash max out Roth IRA, and I did open a Roth IRA back in like 2017, I wanna say. No, even before that, I think it was 2016. I think it was 2016, yeah. So I've had a Roth IRA for a long time. I've never maxed it out until last year, 2021. I did max out my Roth IRA. So again, we get a check in this box, very exciting. And I am, well, we'll see. I would love to max it out again this year. Right now, I'm holding off because we are working on some other things and waiting to see how finances pan out in the second half of the year but I really, really hope to max it out again for 2022. For Roth IRA, the max for 2022 is $6,000, and you can actually fund that up until, I think, tax day of the following year. So I have till April 2023 to max out my Roth IRA for 2022. So I'm fairly confident by that point, I will be able to max out that $6,000. Because I maxed it out last year, I'm kind of like really wanting to 
just do that every year going forward since I did hit it one year. But yeah, we'll see what happens. So did hit last year, get a check on that box, and hopefully we'll be able to do it every year going forward. Okay, so the rest of these are all X's. We did not hit any of these yet. So I'll still go through them to go over what they are, but yeah, we have not hit any of these yet. So first of all, number 11, six figure net worth. Like I said, we are at a five figure net worth right now. We're at, I think around $12,000, $14,000, somewhere around there net worth wise. And my goal was to end the year with a net worth between 50 and hundred thousand dollars. So I think we'll hopefully hit 50. I don't know if we'll hit hundred. I think a lot of it depends on what the stock market does in the rest of the year and that's totally out of our control and some of what the housing market does too. So we're just keeping on with our plan of investing and paying off debt regardless of what the markets are doing. We're not changing our plan and hopefully we'll hit that six figure net worth sooner than later. But if not, I know at least we're on the path to doing it. We just need to keep doing what we're doing every single week, every single month and we will get there. So yeah, I'm excited to hit that number and it hopefully will be this year. If not, it'll be sometime next year. Next are all the different types of phi. So 12 is coast phi, 13 is half phi, 14 is barista phi, 15 is lean phi, 16 is phi, and 17 is fat phi. So coast phi is basically when you have enough money to stop contributing to retirement, you still have to work, but you don't need to invest anymore. So for our goal of between four and five million, so let's call it four and a half million. If we are able to get to 1.6 million by age 50, and then we let that money grow, and we assume 7% return on that money between ages 50 and 65, then by age 65, we will have 4.5 million. Now, is a 7% return realistic? Stock market has returned an average of 10% in the last 100 years. However, as you get older, usually get more conservative with your investments. So you're not having everything in the stock market right before you're planning to retire. So I didn't really like fully flesh all of this out because the main goal right now is to get our debt paid off before we start really going hard with retirement. But generally, if we kind of like just round numbers, ballpark it, if we can hit like 1.5, 1.6 million by the time we're 50, that should be coast by approximately to get us to between four and five million by the time we retire. So again, at 50, we could stop contributing to retirement and investing. We'd still need to work to pay for our expenses for the next 15 years or however long till we retire. And the other thing is, I hope to do way more than this because we don't want to work till 65. We want to retire like in our late 40s, hopefully 50s, maybe, but ideally would be like late 40s to like at least partially retire. I think we'll still work, but be like kind of work optional at that point. So there's lots of plans in the works in that regard. But anyway, first things first is getting that debt paid off. So yeah, Coast Fi, we are not even close to it right now. We have about $100,000 invested for retirement. And what would that get us to by 65? All right, again, if we're assuming a 7% rate of return, that would get us to about $760,000 by age 65 if we didn't contribute another dollar into retirement today. So that's pretty good. Like that's, you know, we're approaching the million dollar mark for retirement. A million dollars when we're 65, 30 years from now is not going to be what it is today. It's going to be more like having like $500,000 or maybe even less. So it's a nice round number. It sounds big, but in reality, it's not going to get us as far at that point as it would today. So, um, but still, hey, like we're, we don't have zero for retirement, so that's way ahead of where we used to be. And so progress is progress. So that's something to celebrate. So that'll be cool once we do hit like that mark where we will hit a million dollars at retirement with what we have if we didn't invest anymore. All right, and then half I, which is 12 and a half times annual expenses. Like I said, I had calculated us to be at 2 million for phi and that would kind of be like lean phi which is number 15 or maybe just regular phi. I think it's more like lean phi though. Um, so half of lean phi would be like a million dollars invested which like I said we have a hundred thousand so we're one tenth of the way there. And then barista phi or burger flipping phi just means that you have enough invested that you can 
take a pay cut and make less money and you may still need to invest a little bit, but you can cut way back on investing because you have gotten so far towards financial independence. And then lean fi would be just, you know, the smallest amount you'd wanna retire on. So around 2 million for us probably. Fi would be maybe like three million and then fat fi would be four to five is where we're at right now numbers wise. And that could change. We could say, well, we don't need that much. Like we'd rather have our time back and live more, you know, simply and not go so extravagant. But I just, you know, these numbers sound really big, like I said, but $4 million 30 years from now or 40 years from now or 50 years from now when we're in like our 70s is not going to be as much as it sounds like today. And I'm really trying to keep that in mind and not be too like small in my thinking for what will get us to a comfortable lifestyle in retirement where again, we can be very comfortable, go on some nice trips, be really giving, and just have that peace of mind that all of our care expenses are taken care of. And you know, the other thing I should mention is I used to be an estate planning attorney, and so I saw the costs of care, end of life care for people in retirement and elderly people, and that stuff adds up very fast. And I met with people who had four or five million dollars in today's dollars who were worried that they were gonna run out of money caring for their spouse because they had a chronic illness or a terminal illness that was gonna persist for a long period of time. And yeah, it's not a position I really wanna be in when I'm towards the end of my life. I wanna be as comfortable as possible. So even that, like four or five million people today are worried they're gonna run out of money, which that's a little bit of an unrealistic worry. I had to kind of do some hand-holding with those people, but $2 million, a million and a half today, I've seen people blow through a million dollars on long-term care costs, like no problem. So I have a little bit of a skewed perspective when it comes to retirement planning too, because I saw firsthand how expensive some of the care is in retirement and uh, towards like end of life. So that is the update. I hope you guys enjoyed this update talking about the different stages of financial independence. Are you guys working towards financial independence? I mean, I think essentially everybody, whether they want to admit it or not, needs to work towards financial independence, which is retirement eventually. But are you guys actively thinking about this, working on financial independence, have a plan, have any goals? Have you hit any of these milestones? Comment below and let me know if this is something that you're doing and you're keeping track of in your own personal finance journey. I love to hear where you guys are at and interact with you in the comments. If you liked this video, as always, give it a big thumbs up. It really helps on my channel. And if you want to see more videos like this from me, then hit that red subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a subscriber and I'll see you guys soon in my next video. Bye.